Hi, it's the third lockdown. The weather is icy and appalling. My hair is absolute carnage. So I thought this is probably the best time to do another review of a 90s classic kids show. Today, I'm going to look back at Rosie and Jim, which was a show that ran for 175 episodes from 1990 to 2000. It was about two dolls that lived on a barge and travelled from the West Midlands across the entirety of the UK. Now, when no one was looking, Rosie and Jim would come alive and get up to all sorts of adventures. So sit back, relax, and let's go back in time to the first episode. Jim! Rosie! <laughs> Talk about relationship goals. If I can find someone the way Rosie and Jim speak to each other, Rosie. I'll be a happy man. Rosie and Jim, Rosie and Jim, tagging along on the old rag doll. Rosie and Jim, Rosie and Jim, and John, he steers the boat. Hello, I'm John. You saw me steering the boat earlier on, but that's not my real work. My real work is writing books. And book First of all, we're introduced to John Cunlife, who actually wrote Rosie and Jim and Postman Pat. Hang on a minute. Isn't he George R. R. Martin who wrote Game of Thrones? Writing books. And they're books for children just like you. I'm making a new one just now. It's all about Rosie and Jim. They're my two rag dolls that I have on the boat. I like to pretend that they come to life. Right. And I get ideas for the stories about them from the things I see as I travel on my boat. What shall I put in my story today? Well, it's a cloudy day, so I'll start with that. One cloudy day. And then I'll draw the canal with my two blue pens, like this. And my boat is just here. So I'll put this picture of it on the book to show the place. And now I'll be on my way. We then set off on our maiden voyage on the Ragdoll Barge. Now I'm just quite curious, I've never been a one, so I'm quite fascinated as to how these work. I used to be terrified of that duck, and I don't really know why. Duck lets the dolls know if it's safe to come out by quacking. Thanks, Duck. <laughs> We're moving, Rosie. Where are we going to, Jim? It's really nice and quiet down here. Whilst up on that bridge above me, there are all those noisy cars. We're going underneath all the noisy cars now. Oh, so Fizzgog's going to steer all round this bendy bit. Now, this is what would happen if Jim was captain. No, I want to steer the boat this way. That's silly! And there's a roundabout ahead, just like one on the road, and it's got water all round it. Roundabout! <laughs> Here we go round the roundabout, the roundabout, the roundabout. Here we go round the roundabout all day long. Rosie, why can't you steer it round the other way? No, Fizzgog said you're not allowed to. Fizzgog. Now, my canal book says that round this corner there's a big hill and I've got to get my boat up that hill. How am I going to do that? Wait and see. You'll see when we come to it. <laughs> a hill? <laughs> Rosie and Jim went up the hill, a climbing up the water. Then they went down to Brummagin Town, arriving on the motor. Hey, Duck. Can you see the hill going up ahead of us? It goes up in steps with water in them. And there are gates to hold the water from running away. 
We can get up there by going through the gates. I feel this is everything I need to know about barges ever. It's a great education. We're not going up there, are we? Well, Fizzgog says we are. Oh yeah, I did some Googling and uh, Fizzgog, she isn't talking to some strange like god or deity. It's actually a nickname for the driver of the boat, John. Rosie and Jim went up the hill and took the duck up with them. And my bag. And my book. And all the beds. And John's book. And all the food. And the fridge. And the kitchen sink. And my socks. And my pants. And my bottle of rum. And everything floated up with them. <laughs> Hello, old John. You mind if we come through the lot? Yes. Thank you very much. You Wah. Give us a hand, we'd be very grateful. This you just I guess everything has to be sung now. I like to run a bar. I like to run a bar. I like to slide down the stairs. I like to slide down the stairs. I like to tease the cat. I like to tease the cat. But if I open the tap using this key, then the water will run in and the boat will come up. So let's do it. Here it goes. And how many locks are there climbing up this hill? Eight. Eight locks? Yeah. Hey, let's help. <laughs> yeah, let's help. One, two, three. Lovely, thank you. Thank oh, you very mate. much. All the best. All the Go best on. to you. Bye bye. Guys, social distancing. Duck is quacking his quacky song. Time for home. We, we stayed, stayed too long. long. Come on. Quack, quack. Yes, thank you, duck. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, duck. <laughs> cool, that duck is getting more action than I have in about 10 years. Open your lock gates, water wizard Jim, and let my boat fly. We then see a puppet version of the lock. You tell me the magic password. <laughs> um, oh, fizzle fuzzle. Um, no, uh, that's not right. Uh, quack, quack. Oh, uh, quack, quack, quack. No, that's not right either. <laughs> Hang on, I swear I've heard this tune before. Abracadabra super glue, open the gates and let me through. How did you know that? A little bird told me. You cheated! <laughs> Didn't? You're not allowed to have anyone's help! Oh, niggly noggin! Hey ho, badoobio, the water comes pouring in! Now I've got to the top of the hill, you can see just how far I've come. The long line of locks climbing up the hill, as high as four houses. It's a long way. And now John at the end, makes a cartoon stories about what would happen if the dolls were alive and a duck was quacking around like a head case. But they couldn't remember the magic words, so the water wizard would not let them through. Abracadabra, super glue, open the gates and let us through. And the water wizard made a great gurgle wurgling and a swooshing and a splashing and he opened his gates and the boat went in. But does he actually know this actually happened? Does he know that the dolls are already alive? Is this a dream within a dream? A book within the show? Then 
The water wizard opened his back door and let them out again. We did it, said Rosie. We did it, said Jim. Rosie! Rosie and Jim, Rosie and Jim, talking along on the old rag dog. I'm off now to see what I can find to make a new story for next time. So I'll say goodbye. Goodbye. Now the songs are a bit annoying. There was about four or five bloody songs in the space of ten minutes. That drove me a bit crazy. However, this show is not made for me. This show is made for kids. And they love singing. So I'll let them have that. And it was also really nice to watch this show now that my phobia of that wooden quacking duck has lessened. I no longer fear it, and it's quite a joy to watch, also quite surreal to see something that used to give me nightmares. But the episodes are really wholesome. There is a bit of mischief and a bit of silliness, and it's really nice to watch, like I said, in these crazy times for a bit of a throwback and to get a bit of nostalgia. I don't think there's many decent puppet shows anymore, so if you have young kids, make sure to introduce them to Rosie and Jim, as most of the episodes are on YouTube and they're quite entertaining. Now, is there any shows that you'd like me to go back in time and check out? If so, write down in the comments below what episodes you'd like to see, from what shows you'd like to see from the 90s, noughties, or maybe even more recently. Don't forget to subscribe, have a nice day, and stay sane. Take care. Cheers! Cheers!